I'm not here to f anybody over. So I don't see how you can have such a problem with every little tiny thing we do, Tony. All you have to do is sit back and make money. Yeah, no, that's not how it works. What see? do you mean that's not how it works? That's exactly how it works. I right. do all the work, I take all the risk, and you get all the money. A clash of titans is brewing in the uneven expanse of the Yukon, where gold fever runs deep and fortunes hang in the balance. Parker Schnabel and Tony Beats, two stalwarts of the gold mining world, have long been locked in a rivalry that has captured the imagination of gold rush enthusiasts worldwide. But this season, tensions have reached unexpected heights, resulting in a confrontation that has shaken the very foundations of the Klondike. From territorial disputes to ambitious gold targets, Schnabel and Beats have spared no expense in their quest for dominance. But as the stakes go high, so do the risks, leading to a dramatic showdown that will leave viewers on the edge of their seats. In the unforgiving wilderness of the Yukon, where the pursuit of gold commands the ultimate test of endurance and wit, two titans of the trade, Parker Schnabel and Tony Beats, have etched their legacies through dirt and bedrock. Their rivalry, a central saga in the pages of the Gold Rush, is not just a clash for supremacy in gold yields, but a dramatic study of contrasting methodologies, philosophies, and temperaments that have shaped the modern Klondike gold mining narrative. Parker Schnabel, a prodigy of gold mining, burst onto the scene with a blend of ambition and innovation. Now you guys need to make us some money so that we can pay for it. We need a war chest. His journey from a teenage miner working on his grandfather's claims to a gold mining prodigy has been nothing short of a phenomenon. Parker's approach to mining is marked by a willingness to take significant risks, using cutting-edge technology and a hands-on leadership style that inspires loyalty and hard work from his young crew. His success is measured in ounces of gold and his ability to consistently push the boundaries of what is possible in the harsh Yukon environment. Contrastingly, Tony Beats, the Viking of the Klondike, signifies the essence of old-school mining grit. With decades of experience, Beats' methods are rooted in traditional mining techniques, honed through years of trial and error. His operation is vast, often mobilizing massive machinery to revive abandoned dredges or move mountains of pay dirt. Much like his approach to mining, Tony's leadership style is straightforward and uncompromising, demanding the utmost from his crew, whom he leads with a mix of tough love and unwavering confidence in their abilities to meet his high expectations. The roots of their rivalry are as deep as the very mines they excavate. Initially, the relationship between Schnabel and Beats was more mentor-mentee, with Parker often seeking Tony's advice. However, as Parker's ambitions and successes grew, so did their competitive tension. I don't care what you do, but yeah, they, yeah, you do. You they do don't care what you me. do. Last thing I want to do is stop somebody from mining. What I do not want to... You Get certainly don't want to help anybody from mine, though. Past conflicts have often revolved around land leases, with Parker leasing land from Tony, leading to disputes over royalties and operational autonomy. These early clashes laid the groundwork for a rivalry that has become one of the most compelling narratives of the gold rush. This season, tensions between Parker Schnabel and Tony Beats have escalated to unequaled heights, setting the stage for a confrontation that has captivated the gold rush audience. This clash of generations symbolizes the broader evolution within gold mining, where tradition meets innovation in a dynamic but contentious harmony. The result of these tensions has been a series of confrontations and standoffs that have tested the resolve and resources of both miners. These conflicts have ranged from legal battles over land and permits to strategic maneuvers that have seen both parties race to secure critical mining equipment and personnel. The rivalry has even spilled over into their personal lives, with miners publicly questioning the other's strategies and commitment to the mining community. The season began with Schnabel and his crew facing the daunting challenge of frozen pay dirt at the Indian River claim. This sticky situation threatened to put a halt to their operations and derail their ambitious gold targets. The Yukon winter had been particularly unforgiving, turning the usually pliable earth into an impenetrable barrier of frost which required more than just brute force to overcome. Schnabel's response to this challenge signified his strategic approach to mining, a combination of mechanical innovation and a deep understanding of the land he works. To combat the frozen pay dirt, Schnabel employed tactical decisions showcasing his leadership and problem-solving skills. Recognizing the limitations of conventional mining equipment in such extreme conditions, 
he invested in specialized machinery capable of cutting through the frost more efficiently. This allowed his team to resume operations and minimize the downtime that could have significantly impacted their season's yield. Schnabel's strategic acumen was also clearly seen in his approach to the operational setbacks at the Indian River claim. The claim, known for its rich deposits, became a testing ground for Schnabel's leadership qualities and ability to motivate and direct his team through periods of uncertainty. Faced with the dual challenges of navigating the claim's complex geological features and managing the logistical hurdles of remote mining, Schnabel displayed a keen sense of adaptability and foresight. He restructured the mining plan, prioritizing areas of the claim that offered the highest yield potential while using resources more efficiently to maximize output. One of Schnabel's most notable strategic moves this season was his decision to diversify the operational sites. He expanded his operations to include multiple sites rather than putting all his efforts into a single claim. This not only spread the risk, but also increased the chances of hitting pay dirt in at least one of the locations. This strategic diversification was a bold move that required careful planning and coordination, showcasing Schnabel's growth as a leader capable of managing complex operations. Innovation has always been a hallmark of Schnabel's approach to gold mining, and this season was no exception. Faced with the challenge of processing the frozen pay dirt, Schnabel and his team came up with a custom heating system to thaw the ground before excavation. This innovative solution allowed them to continue mining in sub-zero temperatures and improve their operations efficiency, reducing the energy and time typically required to process frozen earth. Tietz's decision to resurrect and use an old dredge, a testament to his innovative spirit and willingness to blend traditional mining methods with modern technology. After five years, Tony's dredge is finally catching much-needed gold once again. This bold move, while risky, underscored Beats's strategic acumen, as the dredge offered the potential for large-scale excavation at a fraction of the cost of conventional mining techniques. The path to 5,000 ounces was filled with setbacks, from equipment failures to operational bottlenecks. Yet each challenge was met with a strategic response guided by Beats' leadership. His ability to make decisive, on-the-spot decisions kept the operation agile and responsive to the dynamic conditions of the Yukon. Moreover, Beat's open communication with his crew ensured that everyone was aligned with the mission's objectives, creating an environment where challenges could be openly discussed and solved collectively. Surviving and thriving in the Klondike, a region synonymous with the allure of gold and the brutality of its environment, Demeter Schnabel and Tony B, their journeys, while different in approach, are united by a relentless pursuit of gold, underscoring the adaptability and resilience required to conquer this unforgiving landscape. Posed by the Klondike, he has consistently invested in cutting-edge equipment, from wash plants to state-of-the-art excavators, to increase his operations productivity and lessen the environmental unpredictability that can drastically affect mining seasons. Schnabel's team management strategy is equally progressive. He fosters a culture of loyalty, mutual respect, and empowerment among his crew, understanding that a motivated and cohesive team is crucial for success. This approach has enabled him to navigate crises with agility, rallying his team to push boundaries and achieve ambitious goal targets, despite setbacks such as equipment failures or harsh weather conditions. Over the seasons, Schnabel's strategies have evolved significantly. Initially, his youthful enthusiasm led him to take bold risks. Schnabel's innovative approaches and willingness to take risks starkly contrasted with Beat's more traditional large-scale operations. This fundamental difference in their the tension escalated due to several key incidents and misunderstandings. One such incident involved a disputed land lease agreement. In his quest to expand operations, Schnabel stepped into a territory that Beats considered under his domain based on a verbal agreement that was vaguely defined. Schnabel's aggressive mining in this contested area was perceived by Beats as a direct challenge to his authority and rights, leading to a series of confrontations between the crews. Complicating matters further, miscommunications were further made worse by the isolated and stressful environment of gold mining. Minor disagreements and territorial disputes were blown out of proportion, with each party accusing the other of unfair practices and breaches of conduct. These incidents were often fueled by hearsay and assumptions rather than direct dialogue, 
creating a charged atmosphere ripe for conflict. The situation reached a climax when an altercation broke out between members of the Schnabel and Beats crews over access to a crucial water source. The confrontation, heated and marked by a physical scuffle, resulted from mounting pressures and the resulting effect of the season's tensions. In the aftermath of this altercation, law enforcement was called to the scene, leading to Tony Beats' arrest. The arrest of Tony Beats was a moment of intense drama, surrounded by a flurry of rumors and speculations. Beats was arrested not for the altercation, but for a misunderstanding related to the legalities of mining operations and water use in the contested area. Misinterpretation of mining regulations and the heat of the moment led to decisions that, while not malicious in intent, crossed legal boundaries, leading to the authorities' intervention. In the wake of Beats' arrest, the Gold Rush community was thrown into a period of reflection and reconsideration. The incident was a stark reminder of the thin line between competitive spirit and the escalation of disputes into legal matters. Reflecting on the confrontation, both Schnabel and Beats acknowledged the role that miscommunication and misunderstanding played in escalating the situation. The confrontation between Parker Schnabel and Tony Beats, resulting in Beats' arrest, was a watershed moment for the gold rush. It highlighted the intense rivalries and pressures inherent in gold mining and the importance of clear communication and mutual respect among miners. The arrest abruptly halted operations in the contested area, with both crews forced to reassess their strategies under the cloud of legal uncertainties. For Tony Beats, the arrest meant navigating the complexities of legal proceedings while trying to keep his ambitious gold mining operation afloat. The legal issues surrounding the arrest required Beats there was a sense of solidarity among miners with many stressing the need for unity and cooperation in navigating the legal and regulatory landscape of the Yukon. The response from legal and local authorities highlighted the importance of adherence to mining regulations and environmental protection. Authorities used the incident to reinforce the rules governing mining operations, stressing the need for compliance and responsible mining practices. The arrest served as a reminder of the balance that needs to be struck between the pursuit of gold and the preservation of the Yukon's natural heritage. The fallout from Tony Beat's arrest was a defining moment for the Gold Rush community, leading to a period of introspection and debate about the nature of competition, the pressures of reality television, and the ethical aspects of gold mining. As the dust settled, it became clear that the incident would serve as a turning point, influencing the future direction of the Gold Rush and the behavior of its stars. The community's response reflected a broader desire to return to the core values of respect, integrity, and cooperation in the quest for gold. In the aftermath, both leaders took steps to mend fences, recognizing that while competition is the show's lifeblood, it should not come at the cost of personal relationships or legal entanglements. As the season wears on and the challenges mount, the mining teams lean on each other for support, finding strength in their shared experiences and common goals. Whether rallying together to overcome a technical challenge or offering a shoulder to lean on during a moment of doubt, they know they can always count on their family members to have their backs. But it's not just the physical support that family members provide. It's also the emotional support and encouragement that help keep the mining teams going when things gets tough. In moments of doubt and uncertainty, their loved ones remind them of why they started this journey in the first place and give them the courage to keep pushing forward as the season progresses, we see moments of solidarity and determination that highlight the importance of family support and unity within the mining teams. Whether it's Tony Beat's wife, Minnie, stepping in to help with repairs, or Parker Schnabel's grandfather, John, offering words of wisdom and encouragement, these moments add depth to the narrative and underscore the importance of family and gold mining.